everyone. My name is Tracy Bovey and I'm the fifth grade teacher at First Presbyterian Church. I am excited to be with you here today teaching the lesson for week two, the third, fourth, and fifth grade. Um, I do have a little confession to make. I am super nervous. I am probably on about take 20 for my introduction. So um, um, we will, we're going to see how this goes. Um, I would like to tell you a little bit about myself since we're not there in person today. Um, I have been a member of First Presbyterian Church for about 20 years. I am originally from Hastings. I am married. My husband's name is Jim and I have two kids who um, actually kind of got me started teaching and getting involved in Sunday school. Jennifer is our oldest and she is a junior at Northwestern College at Orange City, Iowa. And Mike is our youngest and he just started his freshman year at the University of Nebraska in Omaha. Um, I thought that um, in addition to telling you a little bit about myself, I have worked at Hastings College for a little over 20 years. Um, what, um, why do I teach at First Presbyterian Church? I thought I would um, share with you that um, I teach because um, I love to introduce um, students to the Bible and to our church. And um, also I learn a lot about, um, about the Bible and about Jesus um, by teaching. So uh, I um, also have an opportunity to grow in my own faith um, when I help um, teach Sunday school. Um, some of the things that I love most about First Presbyterian Church is definitely the people. And I miss seeing everybody in person um, and uh, look forward to hopefully a time when we can gather in person together safely. Um, some of the things that I miss most about our church um, besides the people is um, I also um, miss games with the fifth grade and I miss playing a game with you all as as we would have fellowship together. Um, some of the games that we would have in our classroom um, when we can get back together would be um, I love to play apples to apples. I think it's a really fun game and a great way for us to get to know each other as a class. Uh, we also have this game called Cosmic Catch, which is an is kind of a Nerf ball game that gets people active and yet we can kind of safely do it in our classroom space. And then I also usually have Trouble or Candyland or different different little games like that that we can play with just one or two people. Um, so I miss that and I look forward to getting together and hopefully having a chance to get to do that with you this year. Um, that's a little bit about myself. Um, again, I look forward to getting to know you a little bit better, and we're going to kind of move into the lesson here in just a little bit. All right, before we get started, I need you to grab a couple of supplies to have handy for the lesson today. You need first to have your Spark Bible close by, and you also need your leaflet entitled The Vineyard Workers. It's also a good idea to go ahead and have a writing utensil, pencil or pen, and then for our activity later today, also grab a pair of scissors and have those close by. So we'll give you a few minutes if you have not gathered those materials just to um, get them together for today's lesson. And then we will open in prayer. Hey kids, we're gonna add some tape to our list too. Let us pray. Dear God, dear God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this time that we have to be together, that we have to be together. Help us to open our hearts, help us to open our hearts and our minds as we learn, and our minds as we learn about your son, Jesus Christ, about your son, Jesus Christ. In your name we pray, in your name we pray, amen. All right, go ahead and grab your Bible. And we are gonna be in the New Testament today, the book of Matthew. And I'm going to give you a quick little way to find the New Testament. I learned this several years ago, and I like to share it with my class each year. So put your Bible upright with the spine to the table or desk and find the middle of your Bible, which means that you want about the same number of pages on the left side and the same number of pages on the right. And usually, once you find the middle, you are either in the book of Psalm or the book of Proverbs. So give that a try and see if you can find the middle. After you've found the middle, pick up the right side. And now we're gonna look for the middle of just the right side. We're gonna keep the left side down and we're gonna look for the middle of the right side. This is a little trickier 
trying to do this with one hand. But look at that. When you find the middle of just that right section, you will almost always find the first part of the New Testament, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I actually happened to get the first page of Matthew, uh, which was the first time that I actually got this to work on the camera. So I'm going to keep this take, hopefully. Uh, our verse today is from Matthew 20. The 20 is the big number we're going to look for in the Bible. So you're looking for a big number 20. And verses 1 through 16. And I want to point out just a couple of great things about a study Bible and especially about the Spark Bible, is it's always important when we're getting ready to, to read from the Bible, um, the section that we're in, to look for these orange headings. They're going to tell us a little bit about what this section is that we're going to read about. And today's story is called The Laborers in the Vineyard, which matched the leaflet. And then the other thing I want to point out, and this is part of our uh, verses today as well, is these little think boxes. And they've got great questions in these boxes, we'll kind of talk a little bit about that today, and usually the leaflet that we um, will have for our lesson will cover this as well. Before we start our reading from Matthew, I want to take a few minutes just to review a couple of words and to make sure we understand their meaning. And the first is, what is the story? What's another word for what this story is going to be called today? And it's a parable. And a parable is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson as told by Jesus in the Gospel. Two other definitions that I want to just take a time to review is what is a laborer? And according to the dictionary, a laborer is a person doing unskilled manual work for wages, with the example being in the dictionary, a farm laborer. And in today's story, we have laborers that are working in a vineyard. And a vineyard is actually a plantation of grapevines, typically producing grapes used in winemaking. Let's go ahead and start our reading. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. And when he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to those who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the, the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. <laughs> This is on page one of your leaflet. So not fair. Laundry? Check. Dishes? Done. Homework? Yep. Garbage? Out. Few things feel finer than finishing the week's chores. Of course, getting an allowance feels pretty good too. Unfortunately, my older brother won't know what that's like this week. He, it's obvious he didn't mow the lawn. I've heard him arguing with mom about his grades. Twice he's left for school this week without feeding Sparky. And dad had to remind him four times to wash the car. He's older. You'd think he'd be a bit more responsible. I hate to admit it, but a little part of me is happy he's going to get in trouble this time. Sarah, Eric, ah, there's dad now. I wonder what 
I'll do with my money this week. Maybe Eric will need a loan. Here you go, Eric. Remember to put some in the offering. What? Eric got his allowance? But I got everything done first this week. And without complaining, Mom and Dad didn't even have to remind me. How is this possible? This is so not fair. I like reading the story, So Not Fair, right after we read the Bible verse and the Bible story, because I think there's a lot of similarities in the two stories. Um, Everybody can remember a time when they have felt like Sarah, right? Where you feel like life has just not treated you fairly and you want things to be equal. So she is not happy that Eric got the same amount of allowance that she did and he didn't really do anything to deserve it is what she feels like. And Sarah is a lot like, Sarah's feelings are a lot like the feelings of the laborers who started work early in the day. They feel like they worked all day and they deserve more than the people who started later in the day. Um, And if they don't get more, then the people who start late in the day should get less. And this is a really hard concept for, for people because as humans, we want things to be fair and equal. And that's really not what Jesus is, um, when he's teaching about the kingdom of heaven, it's not about fairness. Um, It's about grace. And everybody deserves the same amount of grace. There is no scorekeeping in the kingdom of heaven. And if we go back to um, our memory verse for today, the last will be first and the first will be last. Let's take a few minutes to do a word search next and turn to your in your leaflet to the last letter is first. And we need the Bibles again. We actually, um, let's just follow along with the example first and look at Matthew 20, verse 1. And we're looking for the third word. So let's go back to our Bibles. We're back on page 1082. And the third word in verse 1, remember that's um, the, the first verse of chapter 20. The third word is kingdom. And so we'll write that next to on the first line, and then um, let's go ahead and do the top part first, and then we'll find those words down in the word search. So on the second one, Matthew 20, verse 2, we're looking for the fifth word. So let's look at verse 2, after is the first word, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it's back to that word that we had earlier today, laborers. Go ahead and pause the video and complete the activity. Did you get all the words and find them in the word search? Do you notice anything about what's kind of special about the word search? The last letter is first. So a lot of them were found this way. Actually found, but D-N-U-O-F. So that ties in really nicely with the last, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Hello kids, it's Pastor Greg and Luna the dog and Esther the kid. Esther the kid. Luna the dog's probably more cool than me. Uh, I don't think about that. So uh, we're glad to see you again and glad you're watching the video this week. It's an interesting story this week Matthew from Matthew with Jesus telling the uh, parable of the workers in the vineyard and so I have a question for you Esther. Okay. So let's say that you work really really hard all day And at the end of the day, you're like, can I have a cookie? And I'm like, sure, you can have a cookie. And so you get a cookie, and then I give a cookie to Luna who didn't work hard all day. What would you say? That's not fair. That's not fair, right? Because you worked hard all day, Luna didn't do anything. Just nap. And all she did was nap, and she still got a cookie too. But that's the interesting thing about God's economy. God loves all of us equally, and God gives all of us grace equally. So whether we work hard all day or we come at the last minute, God is going to love us no matter what, and God is going to give us grace and forgiveness no matter what. And that, it's hard to understand, and our sense of fairness is sometimes challenged by that, but that's what the story is about this week, and that's what we hope you learn from your Sunday school teachers 
We're so glad that you're part of this uh, remote Christian education. We miss you. Can't wait to have you back in church for Children's Moment and Sunday School Wednesday Night Live. But in the meantime, thanks for tuning in and have a wonderful week. See you later. See you guys. Can you think about a time when you waited in line um, and you had somebody at the back of the line cut in front of you and how you felt? I think about um, when I'm in line at maybe an amusement park ride or I'm in line to pick up tickets to a ball game. And there's something about when you've gotten there early and you've lined up. Um, you get really protective of wanting to go first and not having somebody cut in line and, and um, take your spot. So Jesus taught us that even when it doesn't seem fair, that the thing about the kingdom of heaven is that there's room for everyone. Um, the, the last can be first and the first can be last. Um, it's not a competition and God loves us all unconditionally. All right, we're going to keep going with this theme. The last is first and the first is last. Grab your leaflet under plain favorites and your pair of scissors, and we're going to cut out the rectangles below and wait for some further directions. Okay, pause the video and cut out the rectangles. So as you keep cutting your rectangles out, you're going to end up with four separate strips. So here's my red one, and you'll have a yellow one, a blue, and a, and a green. All right, so do you have all four of your strips cut out? Um, I forgot about a supply that you're gonna need, and hopefully Stephanie can help me with some great iMovie editing. And we can add this back at the beginning of the video um, into one of the other supplies that you need. You will need some scotch tape for this activity. And what we're, what we're actually making here is a Mobius strip. And I think I said earlier that one of the things that I like about teaching Sunday school is that I learned something. I actually, I'll be quite honest, I did not know what this word was. And I've got a definition here that we'll put up on the screen. It's a one-sided surface that is constructed from a rectangle by holding one end fixed, rotating the opposite end through 180 degrees and joining it to the first. And I have a picture of it there too. So on one side of each strip, you're gonna write something that's your favorite. So for example, um, I one of my favorite foods is pizza. So I'm gonna write pizza on the top side of my red strip. And probably something that's my least favorite, um, the opposite of pizza for me, is probably beets. I am not a fan of beets. So on the back side of my red strip, I'm gonna write the word beets. And continue on with each of your strips. Write something that's your favorite on the front side of the yellow strip and something that's your least favorite on the yellow side. And continue that until you have four favorites and four least favorites. And then we'll wait for the um, directions for the next part. And to begin, pause the video and write on your strips. Uh, one of the parts that I'm missing most, most about having to do this virtually is that I don't get to share, um, well, I'll share my least favorites and my favorites, um, but I don't get to hear and, and learn about what you guys have chosen for some of your um, um, favorites and least favorites. So. Um, some of my other strips, I think I talked already about the red one. My favorite food is pizza, and my least favorite food is beets. Um, I, am, I definitely like late nights. I do not like my least favorites as early mornings. Um, I did put, um, I thought back to my school days, and I um, loved math. So math is one, was one of my favorite subjects. And probably one of my least favorite subjects was geography or social studies. Um, I always felt like um, it was just something I wasn't very good at and always struggled with, um, especially compared to math. And then um, I have two activities. Um, probably one of my, my most favorite activities to do is to play tennis. Um, that's something um, to share a little bit about myself. And probably my least favorite exercise or activity is running. Um, 
And so that's that was my four strips. So I, again, I miss this time together where um, I could learn and hear about what some of your favorites are. Um, if you, I have a little surprise for you. If you have noticed anything different about me in some of the videos, um, and as I mentioned earlier, I love to play games. So one of the things that I have for you at the end of today's lesson is a little game that um, I am kind of playing with you now. You just don't know it yet, and we'll talk about it at the end of the video. So go ahead and um, make sure you've got your strips all ready and wait for further instructions. All right. So what you do is you're going to put your strips side by side, and I've got all of my favorites actually lined up. So I have pizza. I tape it to the blue. does not matter what the colors and the order that you have are. I'm going to tape the blue and the yellow one together, and then I'm going to tape the last one together. And so you'll end up with basically one long strip, and it's all taped together. All right, so you've got your long continuous strip all taped together. Now this part's a little tricky and I had to practice it a couple of times and it's even trickier, hopefully um, it's not, to explain on the video. But normally what makes a Mobius different than just a regular circle or a ring is the fact that you're going to have a twist in it. So normally if you were going to make a ring, you would just take the two ends and you would tape it together. But the Mobius has a twist to it. So you need to take one side, so if you start like this, take your right hand, or if it's on the left side, and just flip it over on the back side, and then tape together. So you end up with a continuous strip with a twist. And actually, when I read up on Mobius's, <laughs> I don't know if that's a word, but when I read up on this, um, you see it a lot actually in jewelry. Um, they are also different shawls, shawls or scarves you can make um, because this is actually, um, I don't, I apologize, I don't know the origins of it, um, but it's, uh, it's just the, the idea that it's continuous and the last was first and the first is last in one continuous strip. So hopefully you were able to get your Mobius made. I hope you enjoyed the lesson today and have a little bit of fun. Um, learning about the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, as well as what a Mobius is, and had fun doing the word search and looking at how all of the last letters were first in our word search. We're going to try something um, new here uh, before we end with our game, and we're going to close and I'm um, going to try to do a responsive prayer virtually. And so um, I'm going to read the line, and then together we will read. The last are first and the first are last. So let's let's practice the first one. I'm gonna say when others cut in line to get the best seat, our response is gonna be the last are first and the first are last. Okay, we got it? So let's let's pray. Dear Jesus, when others cut in line to get the best seat, the last are first and the first are last. When we wish we were on the winning team, the last are first and the first are last. When we get straight A's and when we barely pass, the last are first and the first are last. When we lose our temper, the last are first and the first are last. When we share your love, the last are first and the first are last. In your name we pray, in your name we pray, amen. Thank you guys again. Okay, so now to the game. Um, for most of the different video shots, I wanted you guys to learn a little bit more about me. And I also wanted to get a little bit of feedback. So I'm gonna put in my email address, tracybovey at gmail.com. And you're gonna need probably an adult to help you with this part of the activity. But in um, most of the different video shots, I was wearing a different shirt or something that would maybe tell you a little bit about myself. So if you noticed some of the shirts that I was wearing, um, if they represented a team or possibly one of my favorite places to eat, go ahead and shoot me an email. And if you get these, um, if you get um, any of them right, um, I will send something in the mail to you as a thank you for um, playing along with the game. So. Um, I hope you had fun today. Um, it was definitely a different experience for me. 
And I um, hope you guys all have a great week. And I look forward to, to possibly playing along and, and seeing some of your emails this week. Have a great week. Thanks. Bye.